Evet, bu orta alanı açmamız gerekiyor. Kenarlara doğru geçmemiz gerekiyor. Esastır! Evet, hadi, hadi. Geri! Dön! Evet, kenarlara doğru geçmemiz gerekiyor. Bas! Sağ! Sağ! Dön! Fırt! Alta! Oya girelim! Bas! You can see the houses would all have roofs on them, whereas uh, in the western part mostly uh, we see terraces on top of the homes because of uh, the need uh, for the people to put their uh, solar tanks on top because they make, uh, they heat the water with the solar energy, with the sun. Uh, and here they use um, like different types of uh, sometimes even mud bricks they use, uh, or very simple life uh, with your, let's say there's a school, yeah that's another one, first use. Hi bye. Okay, look at me, turn, turn, I think. Yes. 
Because ballooning important near the rock in valley. Oh, all these are vision hole. Yeah. If you take uh, on the three uh, life. <laughs> The white color one is the lima. Okay, not now, just okay. a A lady does line per line, knot per knot, millimeter per millimeter. Look, she's going to show you how it's done in real life. You see her taking a back warp and the opposite front warp, and she will knot those two together by doing a wrap, a double wrap, and pull. And she moves to the next one. Wrap, wrap, and pull. It's easy, isn't it? All you need is patience. <laughs> and now I ask the lady to continue working at normal speed. This is her normal speed. This is her cruise speed. Okay. I do not advise her to sit here a whole day. Because if you sit here a whole day looking at this design, I'm sure you go totally bananas. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, <laughs> yes. but if she wants to sit here a whole day, the very, very, very maximum she can do in a day is six lines. And six lines, dear guests, is like half a centimeter. The top speed of a top lady on a top day is half a centimeter per day. And this is why Turkish government has to pay these ladies for it. If not, she would not sit here for five months just for fun, would she? Now, imagine you've been watching her for an hour and she has finished the whole line. Okay? The next thing the lady will do is she will push these knots down. Because you can imagine the more you push these knots. No problem. You're gonna mean for the say maybe for five or more.
Can go up here, no? Yeah, can go up, no? You try this? Huh? I'll show you. I'll show you. I think how to climb up. I think he's climbing down. Maybe it's a window. No, it's a bigger structure last time than where I came. No, no, where I came, I just sent you three. Yeah. I just sent you one. That's why I was saying, you need to create a food for me. You have nothing to see. How to attract you? I think video good. I follow the video. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, the video can see you. Okay, great. Hello, sister. I catch up with you already. Okay. I'm taking a video. Okay. Yeah, but the flowers are very beautiful. Yeah. Hey, this is nearer to us. Then. Don't worry, just keep walking. It's a bit slippery. Oh, it's a bit slippery. Yeah, yeah it's a bit slippery. The water is slippery. Oh. So if you go into the water, okay, then you got problem already. Okay? These are natural formations. Oh. White color formation and the pool. You won't find this kind of formation in other places. Only Greece, I think, can find like this.
Uh, clear white formation like crystal. These are all I think I think calcium. Yeah. Calcium formation. Hey, the water is slippery here. Just I step inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very slippery here. Yeah. Uh. You, you have to be very careful. Very slippery. Yeah, very slippery. You must have ching kung, huh? Uh, <laughs> you de that's why I put my leg on <laughs> the pants. I, I think that's enough already. <laughs> you, you need to pull up your socks, okay, your pants. Make sure that you don't you don't you don't wet your pants. They are taking video already, video <laughs> running. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a there's another pool there over, over there. Okay. <laughs> Very nice permission. Yeah, I'm going down. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm Hmm. Wow. Well, the formation, the white formation, ah, uh, wow. Well, it's natural, very smooth. You don't talk. I'm telling you, you cannot focus. Yeah, I'm focusing. Because I want talking. Stop talking. We just follow the group lah. Very nice, okay. Very good. The more you talk, you talk. I told you not to talk. These are the ruins of the Roman Empire. At one time in the second century the Roman Roman castle existed and these are the remains of the Roman Empire in the second century and you can see all the rocks and all these natural carvings and all those designs made by the Romans remains of the co of the columns and beams and and there is a theater we are going up the theater let's take a look <sighs> this is a path to the theater okay this all this you see are the remains of the second century Roman kingdom. Okay. There's nothing much balance here except for all those blocks and all those stones and this rocky footpath which was at one time a mountain track. So the little Total view of, of the all the remains that we see uh, only this. What you see here now? That's the theater on the right, and these are the palace remains going there. Okay. Nothing much balance. Hey, careful, careful. Okay. 
Krishna had immediately go already. Yeah, 10-15 minutes to go. Okay, go down. The urban greens. Okay, I think this is the parliament. Okay. There's the parliament here. And that one is the common bath. Over there. It's a Roman bath. <laughs> this is the Parliament. Parliament or the Roman Parliament. Okay. Fruit cannot grow. So they have to actually uh, prune the branches at some point. Otherwise, like it wouldn't really produce. Yeah, this is a this is a water pipe. Water pipe? Hmm. Okay. Last time the water pipe is like this. During the Roman Roman Empire.
that passed on to Lysimachus, the man, Platarius, he actually started to build a new city right here. And after that, like his nephews, uh, maybe like 20, 30 <laughs> Yeah. Video. I'm shooting the video. Oh. Good. Video is running. Climb up there. Nice place. All the ancient. Nice place. Nice place. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Hi guys, welcome. Hi. What are you doing? Don't
to the here for this ancient city. And apart from that, we see the Temple of Apollo, uh, which is right below uh, the Grand Theater, the remains of a temple uh, dedicated to the god Apollo. Apollo, the god of the sun, the god of prophecy, soothsaying, fortune telling in the time of the Greeks. Apollo, you know, even uh, in the world, the uh, United States has named uh, some uh, spacecraft after Apollo, Apollo series, so uh, the god of the sun. And in Ephesus, in the afternoon, I'll be talking about the goddess Artemis to you. The goddess, the twin, uh, Apollo and Artemis, they're twins in Greek mythology. So we'll have some talks on Greek mythology as well from now on, especially when we go to Troy. I have uh, the story of Troy to explain to you. You're going to be seeing the wooden horse. So those are the things we're going to be talking about from now on, so uh, about the history. And uh, coming to the formations, dear guests, um, so the waters of this area, the waters of this land, carry a lot of calcium inside. So these are kind of uh, mineral waters that carry all different sorts of um, good minerals for the body. And the one that stands out is calcium. So you will be seeing um, uh, some mineral forests over there, you know, they come together in the course of time. It takes, again, like Cappadocia, many, many years to form. Uh, but when, uh, from the mountains, from the hills, those waters carrying all the calcium, uh, they go down. Uh, all the other gases inside those waters, uh, they evaporate. And the calcium uh, that is inside the waters, they settle down, they start settling down. So when we go walk closer to the formations, you're going to be seeing sometimes, maybe also when you walk uh, on your own, you're going to be seeing some bubbles, bubbles like in the basins on the water, uh, like little bubbles. <coughs> I don't think it's dirt. It's not dirt. It's not dirty water. Uh, it's very healthy water. Uh, they are forming actually. So Pamukka, uh, like Cappadocia, <coughs> the same. Still we have wind in Cappadocia, still, you know, it rains in Cappadocia, still these formations uh, are eroded, and same here, still the uh, formations of Pamukkale, they continue to form, okay? Uh, so right at the entrance, when we get off the bus, um, in the parking lot, our meeting point will be the parking place. So the place where, um, you know, we're going to be getting off the bus, that's again the same place we're going to come back, okay? So that means we're going inside, making a circle inside and coming out from the same place. So same entrance, same exit, dear guests, okay? And uh, when we enter, please, uh, you will see that you require about like 10 minutes of walk to reach to the formations area from the ticket booth to the formations. It takes about 10 minutes. So when I give you the timing to come back to the bus, please make sure you consider also that walking time back to the bus, okay? So it requires about like 10 minutes uh, or so. Um, and uh, our bus will be here, as I said, in the parking lot. And for, uh, again, I have tickets for this place. So at the entrance, uh, the same way, now you're used to it. And it's gonna be the very same in Ephesus, in Pergamon, and in Troy. So you'll have, again, uh, the uh, in some places back scan uh, and uh, again use it, showing the tickets I help you like always and uh, from my family uh, with the kids please are again the same uh, yeah the passports I show them uh, and that's how we go inside okay and, and after we make uh, our uh, way back to the bus so we plan to be there let's say entering inside and coming in front of a little map where I show you where I give you some orientation uh, let's say it's going to be around like 8.30 uh, we plan to be back in the bus by 10 dear guests okay so it's 8.15 now uh, we plan to be uh, back in the bus uh, by 10 o'clock by the time we now get off go inside and walk the formations it's already be going to be like 8.35 something uh, and you will have an hour 30 minutes to see the formations and uh, that area uh, on your own in your free time uh, because we after that we also have the drive uh, to get to Ephesus uh, area which is like 
uh, two hours with the uh, stop we're going to make. It's going to be like two hours, 30 minutes or so, so that we arrive in our lunch place uh, on time for lunch. Uh, we're planning to leave at around like 10 o'clock, okay? Uh, so that's the plan. right by the sea area so uh, it is located uh, right at the entrance of Kushida Sea and it has uh, um, an area that a terrace area that overlooks the whole Aegean Sea and in this hotel um, dear guests to inform you uh, we need to get the passports from you uh, so Benjamin will come and ask those from you and they're doing a scan on the passports uh, because of their internet usage system uh, so we're going to be getting your passports collecting them and right at the lobby by the time we finish our check-in we're going to give them uh, out back to you uh, and he will come collect uh, those passports from you uh, Benjamin and then uh, we're just going to give them hand them out to you right away right by the reception, okay? Because it's gonna be done at that moment. Uh, and we're gonna uh, just give your room keys in Koruman Hotel. The restaurant is located one level below the reception, okay? So they have uh, their restaurant, one below, uh, one level below the reception. And uh, they have elevators, they have bell boy service in this hotel, so your luggage can be taken care of. Uh, if you like, and uh, go to my hotel, um, what else, in Wi-Fi, I will inform you about the Wi-Fi once we get there, it takes about like again 30 minutes, 40 minutes for the Wi-Fi to work after you know uh, the scan is done uh, of the passports, so they have a machine, they have that digital system of scanning, that's why we collect them from you, and they'll get uh, them back to you right away, and Sorry. You asked me, uh, that circle actually represents uh, early Christianity years, uh, and there are some like lines inside uh, that circle, and uh, it represents fish. Fish is sacred in Christianity, and in Greek language they call fish ictus, and ictus is written I, X, Theta, Sigma, and Y. So Y and Sigma, they call Ictus. And the letters, the uh, capital letters of Ictus, they are in that circle. So when you see a circle with lines going like that, that means it's a Christianity symbol, and it represents Ictus. And the early people of Christianity were meeting each other secretly by making that, by drawing that little circle. Uh, as I said, it's an important Christianity site uh, and for early uh, Christianity years uh, with the arrival of St. Paul and St. John the Apostle with the presence of Mother Mary in that area, uh, you cannot separate the history of Christianity from the history of Ephesus. It's very important, so many times mentioned in the Bible uh, and with the morning I'll give you information on that. So after our uh, visit of the leather place, uh, we're going to be headed to Pergamon Acropolis, uh, then lunch, then the city of Troy. Okay, we're ending with the city of Troy, the city, the legendary city that has been the subject of all legends. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, all these also on the way. And after we're sleeping overnight in Chanakla, it's a beautiful resort area. Nice pictures, nice sea view. This is the Aegean Sea, dear guests. This is the first time you're seeing the sea. Okay, uh, because you saw Marmara, you saw the Bosphorus, the Strait. Now this is another sea. This is Ege, what we call E G E in Turkish. E G E Ege. We, that's how we pronounce because G is Ge for us. Ege uh, and Aegean Sea. This one. Okay. Um, the restaurant in advance before we go. They can make their preparations for us and. Um, also, you know, now that 
we're driving further north and already tomorrow we're going to be headed back to Istanbul um, and I have also tomorrow's morning to talk about uh, Istanbul to you Istanbul history uh, and uh, I also have uh, in plan about talking about the cost of living uh, that's something that uh, I would like to give you an idea about before uh, you know you leave Turkey for sure I mean how expensive or how cheap would life be for the worker people living I'm not talking about you for sure you're buying uh, your purchasing power may be different than uh, our purchasing power with the money we make in our country so so that you understand and familiarize about the people's lives in Turkey what uh, how can they afford to live in a country like uh, Turkey so this is kind of an interesting and important subject I believe so I want to talk about that to you apart from our history for sure I mean we're talking about history but it's not only history as I told you before uh, and uh, during our drive we'll, we're going to be talking about these and also the history of Istanbul which uh, we were not uh, able to really go into because the very first day you came you came right out of the plane I met you and I took you directly to Sultan Ahmed area. Uh, so uh, I had literally no time uh, to explain you the history of the city, just the places of um, sightseeing that we had on the program on that day I was able to talk about. So Istanbul history goes way before. Uh, and we have Ottoman, we have Byzantine, we have Constantine, we have earlier times. So we'll, we'll talk about these also briefly, uh, like I did yesterday for uh, the history. Uh, I will go briefly over it. Uh, and we have the bazaars tomorrow. We have Grand Bazaar. Uh, we have uh, Spice Market uh, visits tomorrow, scheduled in your program. And uh, the last optional activity in Istanbul uh, is the Bosphorus Cruise. Uh, you may have heard about the Bosphorus Cruise or you may have an idea in mind. But uh, like I always did also for the ballooning and for the Jeep Safari, I would like to uh, give you an idea about uh, uh, Bosphorus cruising as well, so that you know what to expect from that activity. First of all, uh, you know, if you uh, come to Istanbul and if you tour the historical sites, yeah, you see most of Istanbul for sure. I mean, the historical sightseeing is very important. Other than that, it's just the city where the people live and it's not worth going maybe, but the historical quarter is very beautiful. But Istanbul is two of the unique cities in the world that sit on two continents, okay? The other one, the very first days I was explaining you in the geography lecture I was talking about Istanbul sitting on two continents like Çanakkale where we're headed tonight Çanakkale and Istanbul they're privileged cities in the world that have land on two continents Asia and Europe so that means there is a waterway that we call the Bosphorus so what's there in the Bosphorus if you see the historical sightseeing and yeah, you learn about the history but to really see Istanbul uh, we go on the cruise and that's one of those activities not to miss you know I uh, off by heart you know I've been doing this for a long time uh, I can really tell that this is one of those activities uh, that we 100% get kind of uh, satisfaction because uh, Bosphorus cruise lets you see the city of Istanbul uh, and when we're in Sultan Ahmed, what you're seeing is Blue Mosque, Hagia Sophia, you're taking pictures of Topkapı Palace, but you're not from Topkapı Palace, you remember I told you, please go to the fourth courtyard, I told you, and go by the uh, view area so that you can take a look at the Asian side and the European side, that's what you have to see. So when we're doing the Bosphorus cruise, we are on the waterway. So we're in a uh, uh, boat, and the boat is taking us first to the European side uh, and then taking us to uh, the Asian side like that. So we're making kind of uh, a tour on the Bosphorus. Uh, you see that there are bridges, you go under the bridge, the bridge that we saw that we crossed, you go under that bridge. So you see the beautiful palaces on both sides. Uh, the palaces built on the Bosphorus by the sultans of the Ottoman dynasty when they wanted to put 
uh, top of the palace. They had their new palaces built on the Bosphorus. And one of the uh, maybe differences of doing um, a Bosphorus cruise in Istanbul is that when you're in Istanbul, you're on the sea. When you're in a river cruise, that's the river, especially in Europe, when you go, you have river cruises because all the cities, all the capitals in Europe, they have a river going through. So you can see, actually you can do the cruises uh, in Europe, but what makes it different is that in the European ones, you see high walls. So when you're like uh, doing the Danube, when you're doing uh, the Thames, when you're doing uh, in Paris, let's say, there are walls. So uh, you go on the Bosphorus, uh, you, you see literally the buildings in front of you. On the left, on the right side, and we go closer to the side. So you can actually, without any walls, without anything, because they're located right by the sea, you can actually uh, see even sometimes, you know, we're passing in on good weather, we're going close by, we're seeing the buildings, even the gardens and everything uh, visible. So good for picture taking, good for uh, seeing the buildings from one side. And in our Bosphorus cruise experience, uh, we don't take you on the public. We take you on the private one. Uh, because in the public uh, option uh, in Istanbul, when you're doing a public uh, cruise in Istanbul, then uh, because it's one of those most favored activities uh, in Istanbul, uh, there are generally many people. I've been telling you on public transportation in Istanbul is always packed with a lot of people, so um, you hardly get seats. We don't want you to have that experience, so we want you to be uh, comfortably seated. And uh, when uh, on one side you have the seats, you go on one side, you, when uh, there, we go this side, you have the seats on the other side generally and you go take a look from the other side. So you have the refinery on the left side. This is Ali A, uh, refine, one of the refineries in Turkey. Um, so I told you this is an industrial area uh, on the way to Pergamon. Uh, you get to see Ali A refinery and a lot of factories as well for industry and you're seeing a lot more trucks than uh, normal because this is in between Izmir and Istanbul for sure, a heavy traffic zone. So um, my idea about Bosphorus cruising uh, is that it's something that uh, you know interests and attracts people's attention and they're always very happy about seeing Istanbul. A lot of picture opportunities because we start from the Golden Horn area. Uh, Golden Horn, when you turn your map to the Istanbul side, the one that I gave you, when you turn it to uh, the other side, you see Istanbul map. And that's that little horn-like thing, which is the Bosphorus, the sea goes all the way down. And there is a uh, kind of a harbor, a natural harbor uh, that you see in the, on that map that's like a horn. That's why we call it Golden Horn. So it starts from there, the Bosphorus cruise, and takes us to the Bosphorus and takes us to the European side, then to the Asian side, and we come back uh, to uh, the Golden Horn area again, and after that to Eminönü Square, where, uh, from Eminönü Square, reaching Spice Market is minutes time, like it's five minutes time. Uh, so we leave uh, the ferry, the ferry, the boat, uh, the private boat, uh, in uh, Eminönü area, then head to Spice Market. Uh, so if all join, like uh, what we have in plan is leaving Istanbul, going for our lunch place, then heading to Grand Bazaar. Uh, we would like to give you your free time in Grand Bazaar so that you see uh, the Museum of Shopping, I say. It's the Museum of Shopping. It's a historical marketplace from 15th century. Uh, what 4,000 plus shops, dear guests, uh, but when I say 4,000 plus shops, don't consider they're not all different. Of course, they're more or less uh, the same type of shops. And sometimes, you know, I personally wonder how can these people make money when, like, selling the very same stuff, like, in the souvenir places as well. But they do make money. They survive. That means their shops are open. And uh, so, Grand Bazaar, you'll have your free time. Then, after that, we plan to, uh, you know, we'll of course going to be getting your ideas on um, the Bosphorus cruise and Benjamin when he walks around uh, he will also have an idea from you uh, and 
so that you know I need to know uh, so that I can make my arrangements. The tour will be operated uh, with 10 over uh, passengers uh, who are joining, let's say, uh, 10 over of you of joining. Uh, we're going to be operating the tour. Uh, less than 10 in number, I cannot operate the tour. Uh, if all join, you know, that will be, of course, uh, kind of uh, the best experience for all of us because we're going to be all together. Uh, that way, we encourage you, we kind of, uh, I personally do, because uh, I think it's a good activity, not to miss for you, okay? Uh, so, please your ideas on uh, the options of meat, uh, which is beef and chicken, uh, and on your ideas, uh, not all of everyone is with me at the moment, but family members I'm seeing awake, so uh, for your family maybe you can have that idea in mind. Uh, so when Benjamin goes around uh, and the pricing information for the Bosphorus Cruise Tour is 60 USD per person, dear guests, okay, for uh, adults. For the kids, we have a 50% discount that you're getting uh, and they're paying the half uh, amount uh, and yeah. That's, I think, all I'm saying for now, kind of, um, for us. And after that, as we get closer to Istanbul, I'll be talking also about the history of Istanbul a little bit for you, okay? Because the first day, we were so rushed, then uh, in the first 20 minutes, I was just greeting you, saying hello, and trying to explain you uh, that you need plastic covers for real mosque and everything, so I couldn't have time, really, to talk about Istanbul to you, so. Actually, sitting on the sea here. Yeah. Wow. Great. First time I see like this. with shops on both sides and it branches out as I told you like you're, as you're continuing straight ahead if you don't make any left right straight ahead takes you to Bayezid but there are little streets on both sides uh, and it branches a little bit uh, so don't take each and every branch then it's harder for you to come back to Bayezid Kate uh, but see and get the feeling of this bazaar uh, shop if you like in cash money I recommend and um, you also have like uh, spice shops you also have like lots of shops spice shops jewelry souvenir uh, you have uh, any kinds of shops you will kind come across uh, but it's not gonna be like maybe uh, more than uh, like 10 different sorts of items uh, more or less they repeat each other they sell more or less the same thing uh, in the Grand Bazaar don't expect it to be all different shops uh, and after yeah yeah you can bargain on the price as long as you know it's not a textile shop let's say of uh, like Zara uh, or something you go into a textile shop you cannot bargain that's the fixed price whatever there is on the tag that's the price but in a shop in Grand Bazaar it would be probable to ask for a better price if you're purchasing more than maybe 
two or three pieces, see, two or three pieces, boxes, or whatever you're getting. Uh, maybe they can, if they want to do business, depends on the shopkeeper also. Uh, like if he wants to do business, uh, he can help you. If he says like, I'm going to sell my product for this price, no matter. Uh, but you can at least give a try. In Turkey, in the supermarkets, in normal shops, uh, or in the branded textile shops, or uh, such places, we don't bargain. Uh, but in souvenir shops, or in such places that you saw throughout the trip, uh, you can actually ask for a better price if you're making uh, more like uh, more than one purchase. Let's say two, three, or uh, the shopkeeper can say, okay, now this is my price, but if you buy like uh, three, I will make you this price, or like if you buy four, I'll give you the fifth free. Things like that they can do if they want to. And they can try to tempt you to buy more so that they can make more. Hey, I'm Ramazan. Hey. Yeah, I'm walking. Don't worry. Oh, keep walking. Green Bazaar. Hmm. Nice, beautiful. Thousands of shops. Already coming with me, uh, I will take you inside Spice Market and at least show you uh, a spot. Uh, and then from there, uh, we're going to be going on the Bosphorus.
so please be ready. Again, we're not seeing the driver by the time until we come to uh, come back to the bus for dinner, uh, to go to dinner, we're not seeing the bus, okay? So, wait here. So, dear guests, coming up next, you can see one of the other universities of Turkey. Uh, this school on the left side for you also has, like, starting from um, preschool uh, to, like, elementary, high school, uh, mid school, and also university. You can see. most probably would be spending half of their year in uh, a foreign country, abroad somewhere. Maybe they would also own homes in the United States or like in Canada or in Australia, in places like that. And they would come to Istanbul from time to time. You can see, we continue on the Asian side. Asian side is more green. It's considered to be uh, a better area uh, for living. European side is more business and uh, a lot more. Each of these pensions is owned by one individual because of 100 million euros. All the mentions you see, the people don't live here, they live in Europe, with the European side of the of Turkey. And this is the mosque. Okay. So dear guests, I was talking about Beylerbe Palace. You see the version of Shrine Palace. And then you can see the Palace. And then we're gonna be going under the bridge. This bridge is not open. Uh, to people, I mean, it's only for the cars. People cannot walk in the on this bridge. It's not open to people walking on the bridge. It's only for the transportation, for the bus, for the cars. Only uh, in Istanbul we have Eurasia Marathon every year. When we have that marathon in Istanbul, uh, it's uh, close to car traffic. Thank <laughs> you. 